my amazing students, this is Mrs. A, and we are starting 4.2 homework help. Okay, the first one that we're going to do is number 11, and it says the fast food drive through accuracy. If one order is selected, find the probability of getting an order for McDonald's or an order that is accurate. Are the events of selecting an order for McDonald's and selecting an order, um, an accurate order, just disjoint events? Okay, now remember, they can only be disjoint events if they cannot happen at the same time. We look at the table that they want us to use for this exercise, and there are indeed accurate orders from McDonald's. Therefore, the two um, events are not disjointed. Um, we can get accurate orders from McDonald's. So, we're going to use our addition rule, and... Here is our addition rule. Okay, so the problem is to figure out the probability of getting an order from McDonald's or accurate. And we're going to use our or rule or our addition rule, which says the probability of McDonald's or accurate is the probability of McDonald's plus the probability of accurate minus the probability it is both McDonald's and accurate. Now, the first thing we had to do was total up all of the values in the chart, which is 1,118, or you can add them up on your own. Here on page four, 148 of your book is the formal addition rule that I just gave you um, the specifics on. Probability of A plus probability B minus the probability of both A and B happening at the same time. So in looking at the chart, you can see that the probability of McDonald's is going to be these two added together. So 329 plus 33 all over the total amount, which I said was 1,118. So when we add those two values together, we get 362 divided by 1,118. That's the probability of McDonald's. So then we're supposed to find the probability that the order is accurate. So we needed to add all of the accurate measures together. And when I did that, I got 987 out of 1,118 that were accurate. And then I'm going to subtract the probability of both. That they're both from McDonald's and accurate. So I come back over to my chart, try not to make you dizzy here. Okay, so order accurate from McDonald's. And so it's from McDonald's and it's accurate. 329 out of the total is accurate. 329. So now here's my addition rule. The probability of McDonald's plus the probability of accurate. Take away the probability that it's from McDonald's and accurate. And I end up getting 1,020 out of 1,118, get my glare off of there, and when I divide that, it's 91% or 0.12, and they are not disjoint because there is something over here. Remember, a disjoint set means that there cannot be anything in the minus spot here. There's no way to get both McDonald's and accurate, then they would be disjoint, but this one is not disjoint. That is the end of problem number 11, and that is the correct answer, because I already checked it in the book for you. So this one is going to be very simple, because it's just like the one we did before. Number 12, it says, if one order is selected, find the probability of getting an order that is not accurate or is from Wendy's. Are the events of selecting an order that is not accurate and selecting an order from Wendy's disjoint events. Okay, well, if you look at Wendy's here, Wendy's has both accurate and inaccurate orders, just like all of them do. So no, they are not disjointed because there's a probability, um, there's a possibility of getting both um, not accurate and Wendy's. So here we go with the calculations again. We're going to use our addition rule again. Okay, so again, in problem number 12, we're trying to find the probability of not accurate or Wendy's. So probability of not accurate plus probability of Wendy's minus the probability it is both not accurate and Wendy's. So I go to my little chart here, 
So for the probability of not accurate, I had to add all of the not accurates together and put it over 1,118. For the probability of Wendy's, I had to add up this column um, for a grand total of 280. And then for the probability of both not accurate and Wendy's, I had to take the little 31 down here. So here are our calculations right there. Okay, so 131 over 1,118 plus 280 over 1,118 minus 31 over 1,118 is 380 over 1,118 or 0.340, which is the answer in the book. It is correct. And also remember that these are not disjoint sets. If they were disjoint, there would be nothing over here. We could not have both not accurate in Wendy's. So um, that is the end of problem number 12. All right, so we are um, to find the indicated complements. We're doing number five now, the LOL problem. A U.S. cellular survey of smartphone users showed that 26% of respondents answer yes when asked if abbreviations such as LOL are annoying when texting. What is the probability of randomly selecting a smartphone user and getting a response other than yes? So this is a complement problem. There's going to be um, yes or other than yes. We're going to get the complement of those that answered yes. And this one does not take much calculation at all because 100% minus 26% is 74%, and there you have it, 0.74 on number 5. So we had 26% said yes, and 1 minus 0.26 is 0.74. I gave you some really easy homework, didn't I? Okay, so now we're doing number 13, fast food drive through accuracy. If two orders are selected, find the probability that they are both from Taco Bell. Assume that the selections are made with replacement. Are the events independent? Assume that the selections are made without replacement. Are the events independent? Okay, so on the first one here, we're supposed to find um, the probability that two orders would be from Taco Bell. Um, with replacement. So the A part was with replacement. So of course we're going to use our multiplication rule. Um, if one order from Taco Bell has the probability of 158 over 1,118, again from our cool little table we've been using, then two orders would be 158 over 1,118 times 158 over 1,118. And this is with replacement, so they're the same thing, multiplied by, um, so it's squared. And we get 0 0.01997, which rounds to 0 0.0200. And yes, these are independent of each other because you're going to um, replace the original. In other words, they're saying that one does not affect the other. So then finishing up number 13, now we're doing the same situation, but now it says without replacement. So now notice what happens when we um, take the probability of um, Taco Bell, like we did at the, I didn't change the top part of the board, but now because we're doing this one without replacement, um, we have our normal probability on the left, but then we take one of the Taco Bell orders out and we take one of the total out. So we multiply by 157 over 1117, which winds up to be 0 0.01986 or 0 0.0199. And those are not um, independent because the one draw, they were not replaced, therefore the one Taco Bell affected the other. We took one out of both the numerator and the denominator. And there is the answer in the answer key, just like we got it, number 13. 
Okay, so our instructions on number 29. In exercises 29 and 30, find the probabilities and indicate when the 5% guideline for cumbersome calculations is used. So let's read number 29. Medical helicopters. In a study of helicopter usage and pa patient survival, results were obtained from 47,637 patients transported by helicopter and 111,874 patients transported by ground based on blah, 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 blah. Lots of data, lots of data, okay? Um, and so A says, if one of the 159,511 patients in the study is randomly selected, what is the probability that the subject was transported by helicopter? And B, if five of the subjects in the study are randomly selected without replacement, what is the probability that all of them were transported by helicopter? Okay, so let's read our um, 5% guideline for cumbersome calculations. So basically this is um, on page 152 of your textbook. When sampling without replacement and the sample size is no more than 5% of the size of the population, Treat the selections as being independent, even though they are actually dependent. So when the population is very large and our sample, sm sample is less than 5% of that large population, we can treat them all as dependent, independent instead of dependent. On the next page in your text, they're showing you an example of how cumbersome things can get when notice what they're doing is they have this cumbersome number to start with but then because they are dependent they're taking one away from the numerator one away from the denominator and then they're taking one more away from the numerator one more away from the denominator and of course the premise here is that your denominator is so huge anyway that taking one away from the numerator and denominator is going to have very little effect, um, if any, in the total calculation. And so they're saying when you have such large cumbersome numbers, it's okay to use that rule as long as you state that you used that rule um, in your homework. Okay, so here is the rest of 29. So we had that big number and um, we had calculated out 0.29864. And then and we're doing five of these in one time, all coming from helicopter. So I took the same fraction and I raised it to the fifth power, which is the same thing as multiplying it by itself five times. And I got 0 0.00238. Um, 0 0.002356 or point. 00238. Now, I highly recommend that you always do these before rounding. So, in other words, don't use the 0 0.299, use the 0 0.29864, or use the original fraction and then round it because um, the more rounding you do, the more you're going to cause an error. Okay, so. I would get to the end of my calculation before I rounded anything. So 0 0.00238 would be correct. And both of those, um, the 2.299 for the A part and the 0 0.00238 agree with your textbook answers. Okay, so we're doing number 19, fast food drive through accuracy. If three different orders are selected, find the probability that they are all from Wendy's. Okay, so I'm assuming since we're using three different orders that um, we are not using replacement. They did not specify really either here or over here. It says, order, assume that the orders are randomly selected from those in the table. So we're going to assume that they are not replaced, um, but I did do it both ways. Here we have three different orders, all from Wendy's. 
So I took the Wendy's um, data, 280 divided by 1,118, and I cubed it, which would be what we would get if we did replace them, which doesn't really make sense with fast food orders, does it? Once you order it, you don't replace it. But anyway, it is 0 0.015709. And then when I did it without replacement, then I'm going to drop the numerator and the denominator by one in each one of them because the total number of orders goes down and the numbers from Wendy's goes down. And when I do that, I get 0.015582. Excuse me. You, you can read it right there. I'm not going to read it again. But the book's answer was 0 0.0156, which confirmed for me that they wanted us to do it without replacement, which makes sense. Because once we order it, we eat it, we do not replace it. That doesn't even make sense, does it? So we are done with problem number 19. Okay, our last problem in 4.2. Yay, we're doing redundancy. And um, here in 25, it says, it is generally recognized that it is wise to back up computer data. Assume that there's a 3% rate of disk failure in a year based on data from various sources, including lifehacker.com. If you store all of your computer data on a single hard drive, what is the probability that the drive will fail during a year? Well, they just told us up here that the probability would be 3% of failure, so we don't have to do much for that one. Okay, and then it says, if all of your computer data are stored on a hard disk drive with a copy stored on a second hard disk drive, what is the probability that both drives will fail during a year? Okay, well for that one we're just going to multiply 0 0.03 times 0 0.03 and we will get 0 0.0009 and I'll show you those calculations in a minute. Uh, C, if copies of all of your computer data are stored on three independent hard disk drives, what is the probability that all three will fail during a year? So now I'm going to take 0 0.03, the probability of one failure, and I'm going to multiply it by itself three times, or cube it and get 0 0.000027, much smaller probability. This is describe the improved reliability that is gained with backup drives. So here is the probability of failure was 3%. A was that all data was on one drive, so you had a 3% chance of failure. B was actually the probability of failure and failure. In other words, two disks failed, which is 0 0.0009, which is 0 0.03 squared. And then probability of failure, failure, failure of all three is 0 0.000027 or 0 0.03 cubed. And then D, they ask, describe the improved reliability that is gained with backup drives. Well, it's definitely better. I'm going to show you the book answer. Oops, I was on the wrong problem. Here's the book answer for 25. By using one drive without a backup, the probability of total failure is 0 0.03. And with three independent disk drives, the probability drops 2.000027. By changing from one drive to three, the probability of total failure drops from 0 0.03 to 0 0.000027, and that is a very substantial improvement in reliability. Back up your data. And this is Mrs. A, and we are done with 4.2, and I'm excited. How about you? May God bless your day. I just realized that some of my clips were turned the wrong way like this but i'm too tired to fix them sorry y'all have a wonderful day